Yo, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle and as you can see, uh, all my shit is in plastic bags because I am moving out of my flat for the summer. I have some friends moving in, uh, so I want to make sure there's enough space for them to put their shit. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about what exactly I'm bringing to Serbia. Uh, yeah, for those who don't know, um, my plans are on Monday. I'm going to be in Serbia playing in back-to-back -back chess tournaments for the Serbia Open and the Parachin Open. And yeah, I thought I'd bring some materials. So um, first thing is... But uh, I've got my old favourite book, Chess for Tigers. And I'm literally bringing that despite having read it already, um, just to remind myself of how to play good practical chess because it really has been such a long time since I have played over the board. And I remember it helped me a lot when I first read it many moons ago. Uh, and apart from that, uh, I'm bringing my pieces, of course. Uh, I'm gonna bring Jakob Argaard's Attack and Defense Grandmaster Preparation. I think I've gone for about a quarter of the book so far and it just got too hard and I burnt out, but I think I'm gonna have the time this summer to, you know, uh, get get back into it. So um, I'm gonna bring that, and then of course behind that, uh, it's upside down, but you've got uh, Doretsky, um, which you know, no, like I can't live without it. Um, and the faster I get through my first reading of it, um, the faster I'll be on my second reading of it, and the faster I'll be on my third reading of it, and you get the picture. Like um, the more times you go through it, the better and better you'll be at end games. So I just want to, um, yeah, keep up that grind. So uh, that's it from me, and I guess see you at the airport. This isn't really cat advice, but um, I would say if you're ever in London and um, you know you need to get to Heathrow, don't bother spending money on the Heathrow Express. Just get the Piccadilly line. It's like a fraction of the cost and it's like 20 minutes longer. Um, so yeah, just uh, <laughs> don't get scammed. Care, I'm what you can forget. I'm what you can forget. Hey guys, um, so it's 38 degrees in Serbia today. Um, it was the same temperature yesterday and bloody hot <laughs> but you know it is what it is and I'm glad I came a few days early as well just to get like kind of used to my environment before going straight into the chest but I'm absolutely loving it it's like um, actually the heat's not been too bad because it's not been humid heat it's just been like dry heat with like cool breezes and stuff so it's been all right but yeah uh, I just wanted to say that I just finished reading Chest for Tigers and I'm so glad I uh, picked it up again having not read it for a few years because it just gave me that boost of confidence I needed to remind myself that I know how to play good over the board chess and use that practical advantage that many players who will be playing in this tournament who might be very clued up on chess itself but haven't as much over the board experience like hopefully I can get an advantage over those players so it's going to be really interesting to see how I get on. Uh, my tournament in two days, this is Wednesday, my tournament begins Friday and yeah hopefully I can give my best shot. So yes, quick update there. Get you guys in. Well, hey. Whole thing. Whole thing. Whole thing. Recording now. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
some footage professionals preparing. Hey guys, um, so I just finished my first round of a tournament and I won. Uh, I was playing a 1400 junior um, and yeah we got this Sicilian Rosalimo and I decided to play an older system of mine and yeah I just it, it's incredible like I feel like in my whole chess career I've never completely destroyed an opponent so badly because I guess like as a junior I was always like still an underdog and then like when I was playing in leagues, as I got better, I was always playing like people similar level. But I guess the first round of an open tournament, or not an open, but under 2100, like I got paired with a 1400, and okay, she calculated well, but I just felt like leaps and bounds, like higher level. So it was just an interesting experience. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy. Like the first game in two years, like I managed to win, and I'm really convincingly like really clean calculation, not taking any chances. So yeah, really, really happy with that. Um, and now I'm treating myself with some Lebanese pizza. So that should be good. Uh, and I hope my friends are doing well um, in their respective matches. Uh, one of my friends, Arno, he's actually on board two of the open A section. He's against uh, a 2630. And I actually can't remember his name, it begins with a K. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's insane. But he gets to play 2600 round one. Um, so yeah, best of luck to him. Nicola is calm. Cool. Alma. 
collected. <laughs> so much but I'll play this with that. No. He has he has nine seconds he plays like no. he has all the time in the world. I got all the time in the world. I got all the time in the world. No. 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 Yes. No. Take my rope. Oh, but now I got yeah, regrets. I got only regrets now. Why? Fuck. Because I missed everything. You shouldn't regret anything in life. <laughs> As I said, not only you get beating, but also life lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fuck me, man. Fuck me, man. I get this destroyed. This is so useful. This is. This is this oh no. Oh no. This is all no. That's. Hey, so I didn't end up actually getting too much time to do uh, much vlogging uh, since round one, but basically um, it's round five now and uh, I'm currently on three and a half out of five. So uh, just to give you an update, um, in the double round on day two, uh, I won my first round against a 12 year old who played insanely well. I almost got taken over but uh, I managed to hold my nerve in a better position and find the resources needed to win the game. So uh, that was a close shave. Um, but yeah, I managed to win that game. Uh, and then the third round, uh, I was playing um, third seed, it was a 2150 and I really, um, it, was, it was a really interesting game. Um, I felt like I was pushing for an advantage the whole game um, until a certain point where my uh, plan kind of failed. I had to lose a couple tempi going back and um, suddenly he was the one in the position to take over. So I actually offered him a draw because I saw an interesting line for him that felt good for him. And I was also 20 minutes down on the clock. Now, at this moment, he actually spends 20 minutes of his own time considering whether to take the draw or play on, and he actually plays on and plays the exact interesting line that I was looking at. And amazingly, after the four sequence of moves, I don't know if they're forced, but you know, after a few moves, I suddenly realized I actually had a move, a, a pawn sacrifice that I had completely overlooked, and I think he had overlooked in the calculations as well. So in fact, at that moment, I was actually able to take back the initiative and I managed to get into a completely winning endgame where I had a king, knight and three connected pass pawns versus his king, knight and one pawn. Uh, but his pawn got very far up the board and even though I was able, I couldn't sacrifice my knight for the pawn but I could blockade it with the knight, I stupidly went to go and capture the pawn with my king which then gave my opponent time for his king to capture my free pawns and I completely messed up when really all I had to do was just make sure his king couldn't start attacking my pawns and just march with his free pawns up the board and the knight wouldn't be able to stop it. Um, and in, when I was showing uh, my friends from Belgium, uh, actually I think one of the guys who said this is from the US, but he said like, you know, a rook struggles to stop free pawns. So a knight will definitely struggle to stop free pawns. So um, yeah, I, I really should have converted that, but uh, I managed uh, to mess that up. So I was on two and a half out of three, and I then went into the fourth round playing another 12 year old who had a rating of 1200, and he was also on two and a half out of three from Armenia. And I'd seen his past results, and he had some decent scalps against 18, 1900. Um, but, you know, I was still confident, like, I've been playing well, so, um, you know, I, I uh, came to the game. I also did some prep and I found that um, he either played an Alakine or he played uh, E4, E5, Petrov. Uh, both of which I'm not too big of a fan playing against as white, at least right now. So I decided to switch to a Reti. 
and we got a position where I have an absolutely clear advantage from the opening. Like, he had an isolated queen's pawn, I had all my ideal pieces uh, placed, and, you know, computer will give, like, plus one, but throughout the rest of the game, he defended extremely well, and I think I missed two or three moments to increase my uh, strength of position, but I didn't missed too many like most of my moves were decently good and anyway he actually we got to a drawn uh, end game and then he blundered in the end game and I managed to get a pawn up with a bishop uh, with pawns on both sides of the board so I felt like I should be able to convert this and I should have been able to but I then messed up myself having chosen out of two options to choose a line that was actually um, losing for me and well not losing but drawn for me instead of good winning chances and then from there I literally played the most ridiculous uh, move that actually ended up um, losing so I was unbelievably upset because you know I had been pushing for the win the entire game and I managed to mess it up and lose uh, against the 1200 so that cancelled all of my rating progress of the tournament and even put me in the negative like minus 10 or something so that felt really upsetting since you know like i felt like my chest had been pretty good and res like respect to the 1200 kid as well because he played like he still played the end game really well to to put me in a position where you know i couldn't win easily like i think he played it really well so um i was extremely upset like um I was messaging a few of my chess friends from back home and just like I was really doubting like even if you know chess is for me <laughs> I, I went that far given that like you know I had bottled it so hard but I kind of came to the conclusion that I think I just need to tailor the games to the style that I play best and actually the day before I played the 1200 I actually played an online match um, in the Journey to Master tournament against uh, my friend Sven and I played one of the best games of my life, like one of the games I'm most proud of. And, you know, the game was extremely attacking, extremely dynamic, and I found all the correct moves. So I think I've got a talent for attacking chess and I just need to harness um, that power and try and get as many games in that style as possible. And. Uh, I'm a lot happier, probably also the reason why I'm uh, vlogging because you wouldn't have wanted to see me vlog uh, in my state like after that loss against the 1200 or maybe you would, maybe <laughs> maybe you're sadistic but anyway, um, like I, I won today, uh, I won in 20 moves uh, with the modern Benoni um, and I really took the initiative and I thought I play, played a pretty pretty strong game as well and I realized that, you know, like, you know, lots of people will actually think like attacking chess is kind of a more risky style of play. But actually for me, I think it's the opposite way around because when it's attacking, you know, I can make inaccuracies. I don't have to play the best engine moves and my, like the position is so difficult to play for my opponent defending, I can kind of get away with it. So I, I already put it in an engine and I already saw, you know, some of my attacking moves weren't the cleanest, but the thing is, it's such a difficult position to play. Yes, maybe let's say I play a move that's like minus two instead of let's say minus four. But my opponent responds with a move that makes it minus five. So the point is like, it's just so tough to, um, to defend. So I think for me, like given my game yesterday where I played a really good game, I, I would say. Yes, I missed ch like some chances, but in general, I felt like I, you know, really, you know, I played well. So I think maybe that style was just not for me. Maybe I don't, I'm not naturally gifted in a more positional, strategical kind of chess. Like granted, I haven't spent as much time like learning that aspect of the game, but I think for the time being, or maybe for my whole chess career, like I really find the attacking chess a lot more fun. So I think I'm going to, like at least for the remaining four rounds of this tournament, I'm going to play as aggressively, I'm going to play with one e4, I'm going to like 
adapt to my repertoire in future to just try and be as attacking as possible. And I think the Retty for me, like, I love it. I love the dynamic positions you get, but sometimes you can't play ultra aggressively. And maybe I'll find out with E4 as well. But yeah, it's just a shame that I got such a great position from the opening, but I couldn't convert it because it's just not my style. So lots of things to think about, um, but I'm very happy to be on three and a half out of five. Um, I'm still in the negative rating uh, points wise, but like screw it at this point. Like I I'm just happy I played a great game today. Um, and yeah, I'm probably gonna uh, meet up a friend from the hostel for dinner and uh, I've got two rounds of chess tomorrow. So uh, hopefully um, that all goes well and I'll keep you guys updated. So see ya.